आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा essence of military power artillery is the god of war so said joseph stalin yes even in modern warfare victory is measured by fire power it is the big gun that has made all the difference between rousing victory and humiliating defeat it is not surprising therefore that the bulwark of any country's defense forces is by necessity its regiment of artillery the regiment of artillery has a proud and distinguished history it has been a crucial service to our nation in times of need always holding aloft the ideals embodied in its motto sarvatra izzat o ikbal the ultimate aim of all artillery fire is to break the enemy's will to fight and this it does by destroying his ground and air targets with guns rockets and missiles at his disposal the artillery possesses tremendous amount of firepower the ordeal of living through an artillery bombardment is an experience that a survivor never forgets at the time of independence the regiment of artillery consisted of a small nucleus of officers and men and very few units this small group took upon themselves the task of building the nation's artillery today the indian gunner has a reputation of professional excellence unsurpassed by anyone anywhere throughout the many short but intense conflicts in our history since independence the units of the regiment of artillery have displayed untiring zeal in the midst of the most trying circumstances chushul in 62 OP Hill in 1965 Amritsar and Longewala in 71 History is replete with inspiring accounts of the regiment's unfailing devotion and dedication Today with over 300 regiments we have come a long way indeed Modern weapon systems sophisticated radars and missiles have made the artillery a force to reckon with in any modern war We in the artillery look forward to the future with confidence and pride sure of the fact that when the time comes the roar of the guns will once again carry the day the motto of the artillery is sarvatra izzat o ikbal everywhere with honor and glory true to their motto indian gunners today continue to perform their duties with pride and dedication in every conceivable nook and corner of the country without a thought about the cost to themselves gunners are truly everywhere in the hills of our northern borders where mule trains carry light mortars and guns to inaccessible places Even in the mighty Himalayas including the Sierra Glacier our adversaries were surprised when the big guns opened up manned by daring soldiers who braved the biting cold and chilling winds to blunt and beat back any act of aggression Guns are there even in the thick jungles where sheer muscle power is used to overcome the thick undergrowth and slush to provide crucial fire support in time to the infantry battalions. Allah! 
the heat and sand of the desert are no obstacles to the determined gunners who are always there among the dunes to provide firepower. When time is short and the battle intense, guns are swiftly transported to gun areas by the gunner air observation post pilots. And manned as necessary by them. When paratroopers are dropped behind enemy lines, they're accompanied by gunners of the para-artillery who provide the much-needed firepower for a quick strike at the enemy's vitals. The artillery has a vast array of guns. The regiment is divided into three branches. The field gunners provide the surface-to-surface -surface firepower. The mortar and the Indian-made mountain gun are used in the upper reaches of the Himalayas to provide close fire support to the infantry. These can reach out to targets up to nine kilometers. The field guns provide the firepower in the plains. The 122 mm gun has the unique system of getting off its wheels before firing. It is primarily used to support the infantry close to the objective. Engage targets up to 17 kilometers away. The Abbott self propelled guns accompanies mechanized columns into battle. The heavy mortar thickens up the fire on the target. Handling of the base plate of this mortar requires muscles of steel and has a devastating effect on targets due to its heavy shell. The 30mm gun with its high muzzle velocity is a terror for tanks and is the mainstay of any heavy bombardment. It has a range of 27 kilometers. This awesome nine-ton gun is easily brought into action in just one and a half minutes by just nine men. testing their physical prowess to the utmost. The newly acquired 155mm Bofors gun 
is the state-of-the-art weapon system today. With its auxiliary engine, it can deploy and fire rapidly three rounds in 14 seconds and provides the gunners the strike capability to destroy targets in depth up to a range of 30 kilometers. This gun symbolizes the peak of high technology in modern artillery equipment and is the first major high-tech acquisition since the 130mm gun was introduced in 1968. The roar of rocket artillery spells doom for even the most determined enemy. With a capability of firing 40 rockets in 20 seconds, the rocket artillery is a very potent weapon system which is used at crucial stages in a battle. The artillery air observation post pilots are a brave band of dedicated officers and men who, from their helicopters, direct guns onto targets deep inside enemy territory. They also act as the eyes of a formation commander. And there is a requirement to immediately destroy the enemy's forces before he can attempt to concentrate and cross over the IP. Mission is an air shoot. The complete devotee is available. You have got the Delta 5 frequency with you. Rakesh, you and Devinder will be undertaking this sortie. Please get up on as soon as possible. All the systems of the gunners are coordinated and integrated to provide effective fire support during an assault. The unrelenting and devastatingly effective barrage on the enemy brought about by the different artillery branches working in close cooperation with each other is an impressive sight for the untutored eye. Artillery fire breaks the enemy's will to fight by causing heavy casualties and destroying his communications and equipment. The ordeal of being caught in an artillery bombardment is a nightmare which cannot be easily forgotten by those who survive it, for survivors are few and the devastation left behind is an awesome reminder of the experience for a long time to come. But the secret of success behind any artillery operation is the surveillance and target acquisition or SATA branch who are the electronic eyes of the gunners. The SATA branch is slated to play an even more vital role in the future in surveillance for the army. The branch comprises a number of radars for detection of enemy guns and mortars and for battlefield surveillance. To enable accurate firing by guns, the SATA branch also provides real-time metrological data through sophisticated mobile computer-based systems. They are also responsible for accurate survey of gun areas and targets.
the air defense branch of the artillery is equipped with modern guns and missiles. These dedicated gunners lay out a deadly reception for any marauding enemy aircraft and provide the much needed air defense cover for ground forces, airfields and vital installations. Their deadly surface-to-air missiles have a very high success rate in destroying targeted aircraft. Any enemy aircraft which dares to violate our airspace has to face the wrath of the air defense gunners and very few aircraft escape or their pilots survive to describe the ordeal. Let us participate in a coordinated engagement of enemy aircraft by all components of the air defense branch. Cannons are the locks and keys of an empire, said Emperor Akbar. The long history of the regiment of artillery is a saga of courage, sacrifice and devotion to duty. The oldest gun can be found at Fort William in Calcutta. Guns were first used in India by Babur, the Sikhs and the Marathas. The first Indian artillery unit was formed on 28 September 1827 as the Five Bombay Mountain Battery. But the true Indianization of the artillery was permitted by the British only from 5th January 1935 with the raising of the Afield Brigade. For the first time, young Indian officers were posted to this regiment. They were 2nd Lieutenants P.S. Gyani and P.P. Kumaramangalam. The gunners distinguished themselves during the Second World War at Bir Hakim in North Africa and Kaladan Valley in Burma, then at Chushul in 1962, Longewala and Amritsar in 1965, and in Bangladesh in 1971. The gunners of the Indian Army are truly proud of their regiment, which has given the nation three chiefs of army staff, Generals Kumara Mangalam, Malhotra, and now General Rodriguez. Gunners are proud of their traditions and look up to their predecessors and heroes for inspiration. Their officers and men form a team that is solid and one built on the principles of professionalism, camaraderie and brotherhood. Indian gunners, their guns are their colors, which they veritably worship. They take their oath on their guns and defend them to the last. Havaldarum Rao Singh is a shining example of this tradition. He fought off an attack on his gun with a wooden rod after all ammunition was expended. For this gallant act, he was awarded the Victoria Cross. He remembers the momentous occasion well. <laughs> कि अगर वो गन छोड़ देता है तो उसको गनर नहीं माना जाता है और मैं लड़ से लड़ता रहा जब तक के 
जा पानी नहीं गए ये तर, को दस पंद्रह मिनट या बीस मिनट के साथ लड़ाई हुई थी उसके बाद में हवाई जहाज आ गए और वो छोड़ कर चले गए और मैं सामान इकट्ठा करता हुआ बेहोश हो गया था उसके बाद में काउंटर अटैक हुआ और मेरी गन सही सलामत लिया है Guns are moved at all costs to ensure that fire is delivered. Longowal is one glowing example. It is because of this prime importance attached to guns that an instructor in gunnery is given the distinction of wearing a red band while teaching in the school of artillery. Regimental traditions are followed proudly in the officers' messes, where the grandeur and pageantry of the regiment is in full evidence. tradition of honor and glory is enshrined in the artillery war memorial at the artillery center nasik where the regiment pays homage to its heroes helping the regiment in its pursuit of excellence are its training institutions the artillery centers at nasik and hyderabad take on the task of molding raw recruits who come from different parts of india into responsible brave young gunners pass through systematic grooming both mentally and physically as confident smart young men capable of taking on any adversary through the power of the gun more resume not number 1 fire 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 The oath taking ceremony finally transforms the recruit into a gunner who will henceforth swear by his gun. The school of artillery at Deolali is responsible for training officers and men of the field and surveillance and target acquisition branches. The air defense and guided missile school at Gopalpur trains officers and men of the air defense branch training at these institutions concentrates on detailed knowledge of weapon systems and the art of gunnery
One eight degree to zero minute. This is based on sophisticated training aids, and high technology is being introduced through computer-based systems, so that the Indian gunners keep abreast of the demands of the modern battlefield. During the last World War, Winston Churchill said, "Renown awaits the commander." Who first in this war restores artillery to its prime importance on the battlefield? The Indian Regiment of Artillery is implementing this dictum. The artillery is conscious that its officers and men and their families are its most valuable resource. Welfare centers are organized to provide vocational training to families. War widows' children are looked after in a special hostel. Men of different religions are given the best facilities to practice their faith. In fact, these religious institutions are symbols of national integration, as different religious ceremonies are attended by all. Special shopping facilities are provided. And well-managed clubs and institutions enable gunner families to relax and strengthen the bonds of brotherhood, a brotherhood which has been manifested also in the field of team sports and adventure, where the gunners have excelled. They have achieved distinctions in mountaineering, riding and polo, hang gliding and car rallies. Their sportsmen have achieved laurels in wrestling and weightlifting. Facilities are freely available for participating in all types of sports and adventure activities. This adding the finishing touch to the process of making the life and career of the Indian gunner a truly multifaceted and satisfying one, as he plays his key role in the nation's defence effort. All of us who are engaged in the profession of arms comprehend what the artillery can achieve. The regiment's motto, "Sarvatra is a toy ball," is self-explanatory, but imposes a considerable responsibility on the gunners. In the field of battle, no conflict with an adversary can ever be won entirely by a single component of our armed forces. On the battlefield, each of the arms and services have a specific role to play, which, as we know, are diverse in nature. What binds this entire fabric together is the cementing force of the artillery. The prophylactic firepower of the gunners, whose effectiveness is greatly enhanced by the multifarious types of ammunition used today, and the effective cover provided by the air defence artillery, creates the environment that is mandatory for the effective completion of combat and combat support tasks. With the more sophisticated and reliable means of target detection and acquisition now available, there will be an increasingly more important role for missiles and multi-barrel launchers in the coming years. A dynamic outlook suggests that we too must look in this direction, with our geopolitical and geostrategic scenario in mind. The future hinges on the destruction that can be achieved by an anvil of fire. Created by the artillery, which can stop an attack dead in its tracks, even while it is building up. This is an important aspect that must be taken note of, for our weapon systems will have to be complemented by a very much more sophisticated target acquisition capability. I am glad to see the growing awareness in the regiment, and I am confident that we will go from strength to strength. Building on the very firm foundation that our predecessors have given us, and creating a solid edifice for the coming generations to embellish. And so, with the new century only a decade away, and infinite possibilities in front of it, for the Regiment of Artillery, even the sky is no limit.